Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Greet your neighbor, good morning. And win today. Greet as many as possible around you. Good morning. Greet them. Good morning. Win today. Win tomorrow. And win forever. Greet them. Greet them. Greet them. Viewers all over the world, we greet you. Good morning. Win today. Win tomorrow and win forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll be seated in his presence in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is a rare privilege to share with you the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All is of grace indeed. For God chooses grace rather than works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for my life. I want to thank God for his mercy, his goodness, his favor, and his undeserved grace upon my life. I am Okoyemi Adeyeye. I am a Nigerian, and I've been an evangelist under the mentorship of my father in the Lord, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. For many years, for over eight years, before he sent me to the branch in Ghana. And I've been in the branch in Ghana for many years until the glorious transition of my mentor, Prophet T.B. Joshua. So I see it as a rare privilege to be in your midst to share with you the words of God. And I also want to thank God for the life of my mentor, Prophet T.B. Joshua. I thank God for his life, for touching lives, including mine for changing lives, changing nations, and changing the world. Let your name be glorified, O oh Lord. I also want to take out this time to say thank you to my mother in the Lord, Mama Evelyn Joshua. For holding my hands, you may not understand that. I understand better. For holding my hands. Mommy, I say thank you. And I know and I believe that the grace of God upon you will continue to increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It is time for God's word. Are you ready? You see, it is not enough to hear God's word. But your heart must agree with the word. What do I mean? It is not only for you to hear God's word with your ears, but with your heart. And to hear God's word with our heart requires an openness and hunger for God's message. Are you hungry for God's message? Are you hungry for God's word? Are you sure you are hungry? Then let us go. Because God's word is food for our souls. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. People of God, there is a God, the cause of all things, the fountain of all perfection, without parts and dimensions, who fills the heavens and the earth, governing, pervading, and upholding all things. That is our God. Say to your neighbor, that is our God. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, that is our God. <laughs> that is the God of Prophet TV Joshua. 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the omnipotent God, omniscient God, the omnipresent God, the I am that I am, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the ancient of days. He is the God of all flesh. Mm. The God of all flesh he is ageless, limitless, timeless, endless, everlasting God. Ever living God. Ever faithful God. Ever loving God. An ever true God. He is the God of the universe, the almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. He's the almighty God, the God of the universe. His power and majesty are enough to support his authority. His government and authority are incontestable. What a God we have to worship. What a son we have to praise. What a future lies before us. Yes. To his power, nothing is impossible. When he says yes, no one can say no. There is nothing he cannot do. Do you believe that? Yes. Say to your neighbor, there is nothing he cannot do. Say to your other neighbor, there is nothing he cannot do. Say to someone else around you, there is nothing he cannot do. Ask them, do you believe that there is nothing God cannot do? What are they saying? There is nothing he cannot do. But I am here to tell you that there is something he cannot do. Mm. I can see the signal on your faces now. I am here to tell you that there is something he cannot do. And this will lead us to the message titled, God Cannot Lie. Tell your neighbor, God cannot lie. He cannot lie. Father, we honor you. Oh, God of Prophet TB Joshua, we say thank you. I can feel his presence. Hallelujah. And our proof test shall be taken from the book of Numbers. That's after Leviticus, before the book of Deuteronomy. Numbers 23, chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make good? Hmm. At your leisure time, you can also read Titus chapter 1, verse 2, and also Romans 3, verse 4. God cannot lie. People of God, we must awake to the reality of this undeniable biblical truth that God is not a man that he should lie. We must come to the right knowledge of God. That God is spirit. For this is one of the first, the greatest, the most sublime and necessary truth in the compass of nature. God is spirit. An intelligent being. Immaterial. 
invisible, incorruptible, incorporeal, a perfect being. For if God were not spirit, it could not be perfect, nor eternal, infinite, independent, or the father of spirits. God is not a man that misspeaks. Tell your neighbor, God is not a man that misspeaks. God does not misspeak. It does not miscall. It does not miss time. Neither does he make mistakes. God is a witness and he can never lie. He is in his word. His word is the most important part of him that makes him God. I repeat, he is in his word. His word is the most important part of him that makes him God. God, the creator of the universe. He says what he means, and he means what he says. Tell him about, he says what he means, and he means what he says. He is who he says he is. He can do what he says he can do. He has what he says he has. And he will do what he has promised to do. Get ready today. That promise that God has given to you is coming to pass this year. Yeah. But let me ask you, child of God, has God promised you something? And because of time and your age, you seem to doubt the fulfillment of that promise? Has God promised you something? But the situation around you suggests that there is no hope or future. What situation are you going through that seems to cause you to doubt the fulfillment of God's promises for your life? Is it lateness in marriage? Delay in childbearing? Setback? Disappointment in career? Listen, nothing is more ridiculous than to allow your present situation to cause you to doubt the promises of God, the fulfillment of God's promises for your life. I repeat, nothing is more ridiculous than to allow your present situation to cause you to doubt the fulfillment of God's promises for your life. There is no body without a situation. We all have situations, but I don't know how your situation makes you feel. But listen, how you feel has nothing to do with God's word or promises for your life. Because you may feel great today, tired tomorrow, and lonely next week, but God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can I hear you shout, Amen! Amen. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't base the fulfillment of God's promises upon your life on your feelings. God cannot lie. Problems arise when feelings and emotions change. And feelings and emotions are subject to change. These feelings are influenced by what we see, what we hear, what we read what our circumstances look like. But as a child of God, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith when we recognize our union with Christ in the spirit. And faith is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. It's not a product of the reasoning faculty, but of the recreated spirit. 
Why we walk by sight when we give all our attention to the things in the physical, which are temporary? Child of God, don't go by your feelings. If you go by your feelings, you will despair. And the thing that keeps us from despairing is not what we see. It's not what we feel, but what we believe. The question, what do you believe? What you are going through does not matter. What matter is what you believe about your situation. What do you believe? Child of God. We must believe God's word in every matter. Because God's promises are only recorded in his word. And we have no other refuge than this command of Jesus. Only believe. We are to believe his word. We are to believe and rest unconditionally and absolutely upon God's word. We should be aware to this fact that we must believe. People of God, you must believe God's word is true for your life. Do you believe God's word is true for your life? I can't say your response. So why do you despair in the midst of the battle when God Almighty has promised you victory? Because whenever you truly believe, your heart will be at rest. Your heart will be at rest. Your heart will be at rest. What are you going through? Listen, it is true that we are exposed to things that are not consistent with God's word. I mean, everyone is exposed to things that are not consistent with God's word. But if these things control your feelings, and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian, yet controlled by Satan's devices. As children of God, our faith in God must not be controlled by our feelings. Our faith in God must be controlled by God's word, not by what we feel. Not by what our circumstances look like. Not by what others tell us. Our eyes, our mouths, our ears and hearts must be tuned to God's word. You see, the problem today is this. We focus on the wrong things. And a wrong focus gives us a wrong perception. What are you focusing on? Your situation? Let me advise you. Focus on God's word. Tell about focus on God's word and not on your situation. Impossibility surrounds us when we focus on our incapabilities instead of God's ability. Impossibilities surrounds us when we focus on our incapabilities instead of God's ability. Let us focus on God who is unseen by looking at his word and not our present situation. Your situation may point you to death, to discouragement, to despair. But God's word is pointing you to life and peace. I say God's word is pointing you to life and peace. Because seeing only what God says will produce and increase your faith. Oh my God. What a means of blessing is the look of faith to Jesus. There is life, there is peace, there is joy. There is wisdom. There is perfect health. In fact, everything, everything. People of God, I'm here to tell you that God cannot lie. He never appoints to disappoint. He does not promise and fail. What has God promised you? That you have been waiting upon to come to accomplishment or fulfillment. All you need to do is to keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. For a steadfast look at the crucified one will never look in vain. Jesus Christ is the crucified one. A steadfast look at the crucified one will never look in vain at the great physician. Jesus Christ is the great physician. Never a sickness he cannot heal. Never a disease he cannot cure. Never a problem he cannot solve. And never a burden he cannot bear. All you need to do is to look unto him. For our looking unto the promises of God is a good reason for looking unto God for healing, deliverance, 
Mercy, as such, there is no time to stop looking until God withdraws his word. The question is this, will God ever withdraw his word? Never! God cannot withdraw his word. God's word is the final authority, settling all things, all questions. God's word is everlasting. God's word changeth not, it faileth not. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does nothing without his word. His word is unchanging. His word is true. His word is real. His word is pure. His word is sure. If only you can trust the word. Do you trust in the word? You must trust in the word. Because God's word cannot fail without God failing. You see, we cannot understand God by our feelings. But by everything is what says about him. Because God is everything is what says he is. We only need to get familiar with him through his word. This reminds me of what the Lord says in Isaiah 55 verse 11. He says, so is my word that goeth forth out of my mouth. He said, it shall not return to me void. He said, it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing there to I sent it. People of God, this is God talking, not man. This simply means no word from God is void of fulfillment. If God has said it, it will surely come to pass. I said, if God has said it, it will surely come to pass. Man may give their words, but we cannot rely on them. But God's word is dependable and reliable. God's word is really sure. God's word is trustworthy. If only you can trust the word, then you will know and see the reality that God cannot lie. Hallelujah. Never trust in man or in yourself. For if you trust in yourself, you are doomed for disappointment. You trust in your friends and family, they will die and leave you someday. But put your trust in God. Put your trust in his word. You will never be confounded in time or eternity. People of God, hear the voice of God. Those who had written you off this year, they will soon come for your help. Hear the voice of God. Those who have written you off in your family, who has written you off in your community, they will still come to you for help. I may not know what you are going through, but God knows. But one thing I know, what you are going through is an opportunity for you to honor God before men. For it honors God to believe him even while every sense contradicts him. And God honors those who believe in him even while every sense contradicts him. Such was the case of Father Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. Father Abraham, though stricken in age, still believed in God's promise for his life that he would have a son called Isaac. He believed in God even while every sense contradicted God. The Bible says in Romans 4 from verse 19, it said, I'm being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He stopped praying. He started giving praises to God. Why? Because he believed. The Bible says he was fully persuaded that what God has promised, he was able to perform it. And indeed, God performed it. Because Abraham took hold of God by faith. He took hold of God's word. 
He believed God would not lie. He believed God's word cannot fail without God's failing. What does this mean to us, people of God? This simply means that we are faced with God's uncompromising demands for faith. For without faith, no one can please God, and only faith pleases God. God Almighty requires our faith to reveal his mighty power to him. He requires our faith to reveal his mighty power to save, to deliver, to fulfill his promises in our lives. For there is no way God can come into your matter without faith. There is no way God can be involved in your matter without faith. There is no way God's promises for your life can be fulfilled without faith. For it is not all up to God and certainly it is not all up to you. We must act faith. For faith is expecting God to do what he has promised to do. Faith is the certainty of God's yet unfulfilled promises. And no one is healed or gets healed without faith. No one is saved without faith. No one is blessed without faith. No one conquers without faith. If I may ask you, where is your faith? Why have you given up so easily? What has God promised you that you have already given up on it? Don't give up on God. God cannot lie. He's not a man that should lie. He does not misspeak. He does not mistake. All you need to do is to put your faith in him. And what is this faith? This faith is not faith in faith, but faith in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This faith is a trust. For faith is a trust. It's not a magic button you press to obtain what you need from God instantly. It is a lifestyle of trusting in God. Unconditional trusting. For as long as you have faith, people of God, God will work for you. Don't let Satan get you out of faith, people of God. You have to stay in faith. Believe in the promise. Believe in the word. Because God's word cannot fail without God failing. He cannot fail without God failing. Satan, our common enemy, comes to shake our faith in the word of God and brings us to question the truth in God's word. He used our situation to tempt us. For instance, barrenness for many years can shake some people's feet and bring them to question the truth of God's word that says there shall be no barren in the house of God. Somebody will now ask, but why am I barren? Why am I barren? Have you forgotten that you are a Christian? That your situation is not like others? Have you forgotten that God is still saying something about your situation? If I may ask you, is there anything to add for God to do? Don't allow the devil get you out of faith. Stand on the promises of God. God cannot lie. Listen. God will not do what man can do. He does what no man can do. God will not do what man can do. He does what no man can do. That is why faith is demanding for the impossible. Faith does not demand for what is ordinary, but for the impossible. So what are you going through as a child of God? What has caused you to doubt the fulfillment of God's promises for your life? Has God promised to give you a child and you are still waiting? Don't stop waiting. Don't stop waiting. Don't forget, when your miracle is delayed, for sure, you are about to receive a mother of miracle. <laughs> Hear this very well. To those who seem to be barren, don't forget Anna. When God wants to bless you with a child, they don't come ordinary. If God wants to give you the fruit of the womb, he gives you a child with uniqueness. And everything that is good and wonderful requires patience. So I don't know what you are going through. 
Are you here? Are you looking for a partner? Don't be in a hurry. No matter what you are going through, child of God, never at any point doubt God's goodness in your life. No matter what you are going through, never for any moment assume that God's ability cannot put you over. Never for any moment say God is not fair to you. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. If your situation suggests that there is no future for you, there is no hope for you, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't listen to the temptation to act out of character. Don't listen to the situation, the voice of your situation, to act out of character. Your situation keeps telling you. You say you are a Christian. Look at your mates. They are prospering. Look at you. Don't listen to that voice. It is a foolish voice. It is a voice from the pit of hell. Don't listen to the voice. The voice telling you, God's word is not true. People of God, God's word is true. It is authentic. It is real. Don't listen to that voice telling you. Why not go for a shortcut? Listen. Remember, thank you, Lord. I'm speaking to someone here. Remember, you are a Christian. Don't go to a witch doctor. When your situation is getting hotter, you are getting closer. Don't destroy what God has planned in your life. If God has promised you, he will do it. Don't forget, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 12, that patience is coupled with faith in inheriting the promises of God. God's response is not for those in a hurry, people of God. His response is not for those in a hurry. If you are in a hurry, you will miss God. Instead of meeting God, you will miss God. You must be patient because patience is the force that reveals God's time. Something about patience is the force that reveals God's time. When you are patient, you will meet God. How many of you want to meet God? When do you want to meet God? If now, then be patient for now. Tell about if now. Then be patient for now. You have to be patient. Has God given you a vision? Ask Joseph and he will tell you that your God-given vision is not ruled by man's time, but by God's appointed time. But by God's appointed time. So people of God, I don't know what you may be going through, but get ready. Get ready. Get ready for what is about to happen. Those who knew you as a poor person will still see you as a blessed child. Those who knew you as a barren woman will still see you as a fruitful woman. And those who have written you off in your family, <laughs> oh God of prophet T.B. Joshua, the God that never lies is coming to your rescue right now. I say it's coming to your rescue right now. I say it's coming to your rescue right now. Those who have written you off at your place of work, they say, can anything good come out of this one? They don't know what God can do. The unchangeable changer. The God that revealed himself before the Red Sea as the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. The God that revealed himself in this generation through Prophet TV Joshua that all things are possible. That God is coming to your rescue right now. It's coming to your rescue right now. I say it's coming right now. Get ready 
Today is your day of deliverance. Today is your day of healing. Today is your day of restoration. And it will happen. Now. 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 In Jesus' name. May God bless you in your heart. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.